Hey guys, Jared Beckwith here. In today's video, we're gonna look at a 78 year old who has a subdural hematoma, just a fancy word for saying that there's some blood sitting on top of the brain where there shouldn't be. And this either happened from a, a hemorrhage during a stroke where the blood vessel pops. And now, as you could imagine, blood sprays out and now it's just sitting where it's not supposed to be. Or it can happen through a traumatic brain injury if, they, if you hit your head really hard or a car accident or something like that you can have that blood pooling sitting on top of the brain as well. So when you look at a CAT scan right after the this subdural hematoma forms, you'll be able to see how much blood is sitting on top of the brain. And if there's more than one millimeter of blood sitting on top of the brain, you can be very assured that there's probably going to be some issues, whether it be increased seizure activity or it could, in the first 10 days after the stroke, there could be what is called a vasospasm. This happens from the blood sitting on top of the brain, irritating the blood vessels. So the blood vessels will constrict and you won't be able to get blood to your brain. And that will most likely kill the person if it is not monitored through things like EEG and transcranial Doppler, which is like an ultrasound. If it's not continuously monitored by that, the person could die. So this is why our job is very important. And let's get into the EEG. Let's see what we can see. So if we start looking at this EEG, we can see a clear asymmetry. It's different on the left side compared to the right side. You can see these C4 sharp waves happening over and over again, about once per second. And the way we can tell they're coming from C4 is we have a what is called negative phase reversal. So there's C4 in this channel, C4 here, and if we change the sensitivity, it looks like they're pointing at each other or almost like kissing, I guess you could say, C4 and C4. That's how you can localize where the abnormality is coming from in a bipolar montage. So we know where it's coming from. Now we got some muscle activity here. We can filter out if you'd like, and we can still see the sharp waves underneath. We can turn this off keep scrolling. So these periodic sharp waves, they continue throughout the whole record. You also might see a little higher amplitude in this region as well, because the patient just recently had surgery the day before in this area, probably to treat whatever was going on with them. And this, these sharp waves will continue throughout the whole record. They, they don't evolve, they don't change. So we can be we can be rest assured that it's it's not a seizure, but it's definitely showing that there's like an irritative focus in that area. And if you were to see a seizure, it would most likely or it would make the most sense for it to start off in this area and evolve and change into a it might even generalize to other areas to the left side. So we gotta pay close attention to this area where on, if you looked at the, the CAT scan beforehand, you would see that there was blood pooling in this exact area. So it's good to take into account the whole picture when you're doing your EEGs, not just singular focus on EEG. Think about the other tests, look through the patient's history before you go to do their EEG so you'll know what to look for. So and it's pretty clear here. It's just gonna be the same exact uh, C4 sharp waves throughout the rest of this EEG recording. Not much of a change here. Now, one thing to take note of, if you have a patient with a subdural hematoma, this blood resting on top of the brain, uh, if it just happened from like a stroke or hemorrhage, you're going to want to pay close attention to them throughout the first 10 days. Now, this is because the blood, the new blood sitting on top of the brain where it shouldn't be, it can irritate the brain, cause not only seizures, but something called a vasospasm, which constricts the blood flow. They won't be able to get blood flow to this area, and it'll essentially flatline them on the right side of the brain. Now, it's, it's extremely able to be reversed if you catch it early enough, if you catch it in real time, which an EEG is good for, if you can see it going flatline on the right side, you can have neurosurgical intervention and stop the person from essentially dying from 
a stroke caused from the initial hemorrhage, which put the blood on top of the brain to irritate it in the first place. So it's very important things to look at. Now, if you're monitoring a patient like this and you're worried about them having a vasospasm, you can uh, open up the trends so you can see the trends of the brain data over long periods of time and you can compare the right side to the left side. Now, as we pull this up here, in the right parasagittal area, that's where the C4 sharp waves are coming from. So the red stuff here, it's going up a little bit higher than it is here. So this is called broadband, showing the periodic discharges in the C4 area. And it's not, it looks different than the left parasagittal where there's no periodic discharges. The red only goes up very little this is called a narrow band pattern. And if they were to have a vasospasm on the right side, the red amplitude detector, it'll go down to pretty much zero. You'll be able to see a clear, huge asymmetry, and you'll be able to notify the neurologist and the neurosurgeon so that they could reverse this if they are, in fact, having a vasospasm. And it's important to intervene as soon as possible. I, I, I like to say within two hours and you can reverse any permanent neurological damage. So hope you guys learned something in this video going through this 78 year old who has a subdural hematoma. Hope you guys liked it. Hit the like button if you did and I will see you guys on the next EEG video.